Now, Fox Carolina live news coverage of the Davo Sweeney Press Conference. It's a Tuesday, and it is another Clemson football game week. They are back in action, coming back off of an early bye week, just a third week of college football season, and Clemson had that early bye, one of two that they'll have this season, uh, and they went out uh, with an emphatic no with that huge win over App State, a good bounce-back win, and the first win for the Clemson Tigers of the season. Got to see Cade Klubnick absolutely shine, his confidence coming through as he and a whole field of receivers, tight ends, and running Backs. Got a lot of work in for the Clemson offense. Really great to see some of those young guys step up on the offense. We got to see Wesco uh, absolutely uh, just electric there in the first half of the game as uh, Kate Klubnick connected with him early uh, and a couple of times getting his uh, first touchdown of the season of his college career under his belt. Dabo Sweeney telling us uh, last week in the All Access with Dabo Sweeney show about how proud he was of Kate to make some of those leads got to see some of that confidence. He made checks. He made decisions uh, that this coaching staff, that this team has seen time and time again in practice uh, and the fans able to enjoy that moment at Memorial Stadium. The Tigers will be back at Memorial Stadium again this week as they now enter that ACC play. They're kicking off the ACC conference with NC State. Uh, the Wolfpack 2-1 coming off of a win over Louisiana Tech this past weekend. But they lost their starting quarterback in the early action of that game. We're going to see C.J. Bailey. He came in for McCall uh, in that first half against Louisiana Tech, but they are going to go with him according to uh, the NC State Wolfpack. We'll now go out to Dabo Sweeney where he's addressing the media. Applications for credentials remain open through noon on Wednesday. In addition, Stanford applications are open for the following game. Those will close the following Wednesday. Uh, as always, Coach Sweeney will have some opening comments, then we'll go to questions in the room, and if time permits at the end, we'll go to questions virtually. And we will again ask that you please speak up for the benefit of our audiences live on 105.5 The Roar, Fox Carolina, and Clemson Plus. So, Coach, whenever you're ready, take it away. All right, thank you, Ross. Uh, well, good, good morning, everybody. Excited to get back at it this week. Uh, it's it's uh, you know been a good opportunity for us to to you know, improve our team, learn from the first couple games, um, and uh, hopefully apply some of those those lessons, um, you know, moving forward. But, you know, proud of the guys and how they worked last week. Uh, got a couple guys that have, have taken advantage of the opportunity to, to continue to, you know, get healthy. Um, but uh, just ready to get back at it. It's going to be a great uh, opportunity for us here at home. Noon game, uh, you know, this is a – a big game for both teams as we get into conference play, and that's really what it's all about, you know. At this point, is is uh, you know conference, and it's, we got eight straight conference games coming up. So uh, every week is is a is a huge opportunity, you know, starting with this one. But you know, I know our crowd is is going to show up. That was a great environment uh, against App State, and I know they'll be eager to to get back in the valley and and kick this thing off the right way. It's also uh, Paul Journey Week. Uh, for us, this is a week that we take, uh, you know, kind of a every day we have a little bit of a, a way to celebrate Paul Journey. We'll have a little banquet Thursday night, uh, you know, with some of our uh, supporters and, and uh, people who donate uh, to Paul Journey and uh, recognize some folks. So just a big week uh, from that regard. And appreciate, you know, what Jeff Davis uh, means to to all of Clemson, uh, and certainly Clemson football, and um, as the leader of our Paul Journey program. So a lot of young men's lives have been enriched and changed uh, through through Paul Journey initiatives. And so it's great to celebrate that. And, and uh, kind of this is the, like I said, this is the week that we do that. But, you know, NC State's a good football team. Uh, you know, they're undefeated in the league. Uh, so this is their first one as well. Uh, so big, big rivalry game every year it's been been around for a long long time nobody really talks about the textile bowl anymore but it's still out there uh and you know means a lot to a lot of people on both sides of this game so uh this is a very experienced football team that we're getting ready to play um you know they obviously lost their quarterback but they went and got mccall uh who who you know this guy's played a million games and i know he's you know right now just says that he's not going to be the starter uh, and then they went and brought in Noah Rogers, uh, you know, 10 
had a heck of a year last year, so he's back. They went and got the running back from Duke. So it's a really – and then all those linemen are back, and then they brought the center in uh, from Notre Dame. So a very, very experienced offensive group. They're well coached. They're tough. They're physical. You know, they're, they're built to run the ball. Uh, they challenge you from a discipline standpoint and, and, you know, leveraging the ball, eyes on your work, uh, a lot of, you know, just discipline type plays in what they do, and then they're downhill at you. So, uh, you know, just a good football team. Uh, again, receivers that can make plays and over on the defensive side, really good up front. Uh, physical, strong, you know, this is a, a, a defense that's a, um, you know, I mean, they're, they're not afraid to challenge you and come after you. Uh, and that's it doesn't matter who they're playing. That's just their, their mentality. Uh, and then, you know, they'll, they'll play a lot of drop eight as well, you know, just depending on, on the situation. It could be first down. It could be third long. You know, so they do a really good job, you know, from a scheme standpoint. But really, really good football team. Uh, same thing. A lot of guys with a lot of experience. Uh, and, uh, you know, I know they had a couple guys that are questionable. But... Uh, I, would, I would say uh, wh whoever they run out there on Saturday will be, will be ready to play, play the Tigers and uh, vice versa. So we're looking forward to a great opportunity. Dave's done an awesome job uh, with that program and uh, a place I got a lot of respect for and, and look forward to a great, great battle on Saturday. Yes, do you hope or expect that Peter Woods will be able to practice this week? What's that? Peter Woods. Yeah, yeah, he's day-to-day. He's day-to-day. He's day -to -day. <laughs> <laughs> he's every day that ends in Y. He's day to day. Uh, he's been out. He's at practice. Uh, he's, he's he hadn't missed one yet. He's out there every day, grinding, and working. He stayed here all weekend. As a matter of fact, uh, just to continue to to work on uh, his his rehab. Do have a, a bad uh, some bad um, news, and uh, we we did lose Dietrich Pennington. Uh, I don't know if y'all had already heard that or, or not, but. Um, it, uh, maybe y'all put that out. I don't know. Uh, nobody knew that. Wow. Uh, I, I didn't know that. But yeah, he's he's uh, he he's got to have his ACL repaired. He had kind of what they call a. Uh, it, it wasn't fully torn, but I think it's one of those deals. It, it's it's not going to heal back up. So they got to they got to um, they got to fix it. So really, I hate that for that kid. Uh, hopefully, you know, our plan is to get the year back. So that he'll still have a couple of years, and because uh, he really was starting to come on, and um, you know, just a just a setback for for him. But you know, he's in a good place and mentally, and and uh, knows what he's got to do. But uh, that's a that's another tough loss for us for sure. Um, so uh, Caleb Nix had his surgery last week, uh, as well <clears throat> as uh, Kobe. So you know, a couple tough breaks for us there. But hopefully, uh, some of these other guys will be will be getting back in here, you know, full go uh, as well soon. Was Dietrich the top state game was when he got hurt? Yeah, I got he got he he had he had kind of been swell it swelled up on him, and then he just kind of somehow in that game he felt it again, and you know we just got him back and did the MRI and all that stuff. And it, again, it wasn't a full tear, but it's just they say they got to repair it anyway because of the type of injury. Uh, so. Hate that for him. I really do. That's a that's a tough loss uh, for us. But again, long term, uh, you know, we'll try to get the year back and and um, you know see if we can reset with him. Going David the time, and I going back to NC State. They uh, that uh, Concepcion, Casey Concepcion, he is a, a dynamic playmaker. How do you? Cut, they, they line him up everywhere. Yeah. Out field, out wide, in the slot. They they try to put him everywhere. They do, and I would say you'll probably see more of that this week. I mean, you know, that we, I would anticipate you might see him in some wildcat situation uh, to try to create, you know, some extra hats in the run game. Um, you know, a lot that they do with McCall. McCall is a, he's a really good runner, and a very very willing runner and a smart runner. Um, so. Uh, you know they they've done that already in the past with ten. And I could see them you know doing a little bit more of that. But he, they're just going to make sure. He, I mean he's a he's a dynamic player, so they're going to make sure he touches the ball and they move him around. So it's hard to just you know really isolate on him. You know they move him around to try to create some mismatches and isolate him on some on what they think's better matchups. Uh, and you know but they motion him all the time, they line him up everywhere. So he's a good football player, and they do a good job of of getting him you know touches. 
Uh, so you have to know where he is every single play. Uh, it, it's you know they're not going to come out of the game uh, or or many drives, if you will, without him being involved. So you you better you better know where he is. And that doesn't mean they don't have other good players. They do. You know if, if the tight end's a good player, they got a couple good tight ends. Uh, you know they got a couple big receivers. Um, you know Dakari's a good player, kid that we liked here, and, and he's a big strong receiver. Um, so. You know, he, he's a, a guy. They brought in Noah, so they got they got they got good dudes. You know, but it all starts with the run game for them. I mean, they're they're gonna they're gonna challenge you from a physical standpoint um, in uh, in the run game, and then leveraging the ball. And obviously, how we did in that first game, you know, with with the with the two big plays we gave, you know, just didn't leverage the ball outside in uh, properly. You know, they'll challenge that. So we got to do a good job there, but. Uh, and they do it different ways, whether it's the stretch, it's the boots, uh, the swap boots, or it's all the jets that they have where you really have to do a good job of containing the ball and turn everything back to your to your pursuit. Well, how do you think that Sammy Brown and D. Creighton did in sort of the trial by fire, playing a lot of snaps against the app, and, and how comfortable do you feel with one or both of those guys, with Kobe being out, sort of being trusted to play? Uh, competitive staffs moving forward. Yeah, we're, I mean, they're ready to go play. I mean, that's our job as coaches to, to you know, uh, help them be confident in, in uh, you know, what their what their job is. And, you know, if, if and if they don't, if they're not confident with something, well, what are they confident with? And then let's make sure we ask them to do that. You know, I think that's just coaching. You got to, you know, we always say we got to meet them where they are. And we can't just expect them to come to us or, or to where maybe another player is. So you have to be smart <clears throat> with uh, where, where those guys are. I mean, they're, I mean, they're, they haven't played as much football as Barrett Carter. Uh, but I'm, I'm really encouraged. I mean, I think those guys have taken a ton of ownership. Uh, Wes has done a great job with them. And, uh, you know, Dee and Sammy, they're ready to roll. So good players. They're talented guys, and they're talented young guys that are, you know, their their best football still in front of them for sure. So that's one of those positions you hopefully that, you know, you stay a little healthy and you can keep your you can keep your your best guys healthy and and bring those guys along. But um, they got to be ready to go play, and they will be. Is there any concern with the offensive line with uh, Pennington, Pen yeah, Pennington going down, and uh, with Trent Howard is he back practicing? Trent's or? back. Okay. Yep. So we got we do have him back. So that's a positive. Uh, again, he was one of those guys that the, the off week was good. So that's a that's a huge uh, shot in the arm for us getting a, a, a real veteran guy back that can you know snap and play guard for us. Um, but we we like we we're fortunate. And again, we've been if we we got more depth there than we've had in a while and we've got some guys that bring a lot of versatility like for example Sadler, for example Sadler can play really anywhere you know except center he's not going to play center for us but he 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 could play four positions um, uh, Marcus Tate could play pop in and play tackle no problem you know Harrison Trent give us some good good depth and flexibility there as well um, and then um, you know Elijah Thurman is a guy that's that's really uh, a kid that I think is going to continue to just progress and uh, and be ready to help us. Did the bye week help Marcus too in terms yes. of getting back to where so yes. he's back totally available? And yeah, and he's ready to roll. And he and again he was available for yeah. App. He just yeah. we just again we, you know we, we're we're there might have been in years past where like hey man you got to go you know but when you got a guy like Sadler that's sitting there like, well, there's no sense in having a guy out there that maybe isn't quite a hundred percent. Um, and uh, when you got a guy that's that is so, but he's good. What impact has Pat Luke made on that group this year? Like, have you seen like specific improvements or differences in, in that unit with him as coach this year that maybe you would, wouldn't have seen in the past? Uh, I mean, I, I just I think he's just done an awesome job in uh, really developing the chemistry in the room and the and the. You know they're a very connected group. Um, obviously, we're more experienced. You know he's got a he's got a pretty experienced group that he's that he's walking in there with. Tristan Lee is a fourth year guy now. Redshirt junior. Blake is, has been a two year starter. He's in his third year as a starter. Sadler's a redshirt sophomore. Trent's a fifth year guy. Harris has started as a freshman. So I think it's a room that 
that has more experience and and I just think that he's just done an awesome job you know from a uh, you know leadership standpoint and really just you know uh, his his daily approach and how he goes about his business I think it's been really really good those kids have have really bought into you know what he's asking them to do and how he wants them to play and uh, how he wants them to practice you know all that stuff so he's done he's done a great job in really every aspect he's done a great job in recruiting for us uh, as well uh, so um, just been a huge huge plus force we talk a lot about Kate's second year with the offense and what that means for him is that a similar aspect for for the offensive line when they've been in a part of the offensive yes. scheme for an extra year that, that it, it just works better yeah, and there's no question I mean if you got talent I mean you know if you're talented you know if, if you got some guys that are strong and big and you got the you got the the ingredients uh, I think I think that's just natural that you get better with experience I mean and you see that I mean you, you all through the years that we've had guys here um, you know whether it's Gage Cervinka uh, who was a guy that you know by the time he was a fifth year senior he was a really good player you know but you know guys just get better you know if they if they're made of the right stuff they they put the work in um, it's important to them you know there's they're going to get better you know if they're really truly bought into what you're asking them to do and because the the game slows down you know i mean then when you have continuity you know from a system standpoint and knowledge and things like that um, you, you you're not you know you're not you, you've got the base stuff, and so now you're on it. You you see things in a different light when you're a, you know, junior than you did as a freshman, and that's at every position. And then, you know, and sometimes guys have great first years, and that's great. But if that's their best year, something went wrong, right? Like they should be better as they go through their career, and I think that's. Uh, that's what you're seeing with those guys. I mean, they're definitely more confident. But being year two in the same system is a part of that uh, because they're not starting over, you know. And I mean, they're 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 adding, they're stacking, you know. So I think that's important. What's it like to see Elijah moving so sort of confidently, I guess, and full speed as he was last week? Elijah Thurman. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry, Thurman. Man, he, he's uh, he, he's he looks like a D lineman. I mean, he can run. This guy can move. Uh, but that's one of the things. That's what we loved about him coming out. You just, you, you just, you knew physically, watching him in high school. Physically, he's going to be in position to help us. But you never know. Do you start coaching a guy? Will, will the will the mental part add up to match the physical part? You know, again, we see. I've had many times. Physically, the guy looks the part, but mentally, it's just going to take a little while, and then vice versa. I've seen guys that physically they're not ready, but mentally, they're way beyond, and they help you. And so you just—that's why you just don't ever—you just—you just never really know. You don't really make any decisions on guys until you can really start coaching kids and, and seeing where they are. And you don't want to—you know—you you, you try not to. You don't want to put guys out there, um, especially in today's world, where they're not equipped to have success and you know because man that can really that can really hurt a kid um, you know so I think you gotta be smart but Elijah when he got here I mean this kid he, same thing he, he can play five positions that's how smart he is he could play five positions he played center in high school we haven't really asked him to play center here yet but I would I would I would be willing to bet he'll probably play some center before he leaves Clemson but you know he's a he's a rare kid. I mean, he really truly can can you know be a kid that at some point could probably start in five different positions. Uh, he's that strong. He's that athletic. He's that smart. And so you know we're really really blessed to have a kid like him. And and we don't have to have him start right now. You know. Uh, he can be a guy that we can bring along and, and keep developing him. But he's going to really. He's going to really be a good football player. I think it's very important to him. He's physical. All you got to do is watch him run. I mean, he doesn't run like many, like, like many. Uh, he looks, like, like I said, he runs a lot of times like a D lineman. He's, and he's really athletic. So he'll keep putting the work in. He's, he's going to be a really good player. He's got all the, all the tools. And again, just his, his versatility is hard to find. Talk about today's world. Um, 
fine. I think I'm a good guy who had to wait several years to start. How, how, how do you sell that to a player, especially now with the transfer portal? He could go seek another opportunity. How rare is that to have a guy stay until he's a redshirt junior? Well, it hasn't been rare here. You know, it's, it is rare in college football, but, I, you know, I think we were second or third in retention last year. It's not that we don't lose some guys, but, you know, when you compare it to everything else going on, we, we, we don't have many guys leave. And I think uh, so it's not, a, it's not about selling anything. It's just about, uh, you know, having relationships in place, uh, making sure that, you know, you – you guys, you, you continue to help create vision for guys. I think that's maybe part of it and uh, their opportunity and then the value of being where they are and developing. Uh, you know, it's, I just think it's, it's really important. Uh, development is huge. Uh, you asked me about the offense, right? I mean, like, I mean, if you're starting over all the time, it's hard to get to that next level. It's just hard from a developmental standpoint. Because there's just there's just a lot, and if you're really starting over, you know, which a lot of a lot of guys do, um, you know, it's, it's just it can it can limit you a little bit because you never quite get to 103 because you're always back at 101 because you got to get the basics down of anything before you can really advance. And football is a unique sport, and that you know we have a lot of things that we all call the same thing. Oh, we go, oh, that's inside zone. Oh, that's the power. Oh, that's the counter. Oh, that's the toss play. Oh, that's four verts. Oh, that's a stick route. But nobody calls it that. Like, you don't just go to the next school and say, all right, we're going to run the power. And everybody's on the same. But, oh, everybody's got their own terminology, their own languages, their own systems, their own. And that, that takes a while. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's really way more complicated than what people know. Uh, so when you're you know so the development of that is important I always I always say it's like math you got to learn how to add subtract long division multiply right and then you, you know you can't just jump go to calculus I mean you're not going to be very successful you know you, you're just not you know you've got to build the foundation uh, you know from a long-term standpoint uh, so I think that's definitely uh, you know important on that same note, you guys might see C.J. Bailey, a freshman, this upcoming weekend. What is it like preparing for a guy that you've seen so little film on? I mean, you prepare for what they do. I mean, they're not going to change their whole offense. Uh, you know, I mean, they got a week to get ready. I mean, they're going to do what they do. They're going to turn around and hand that ball to them big old backs. Uh, them dudes are good players. Uh, they, they, you know, Waters was third in the history of Duke. They're gonna hand it. They're gonna. They're gonna come off the ball with them big offensive linemen and try to. It's about blocking, tackling, fitting gaps. You know, moving people. I mean, it, I mean, okay, yeah. I mean, he's got to. I mean, they're not gonna just ask this kid to. Okay, go win a game. They're gonna ask him to do his job. Uh, that's why he's there, and that's why he's been practicing and and all that stuff. But I mean, they're gonna. They're gonna tailor what they do maybe to uh, his strengths, but they're not going to change what they do. Uh, you know, they're not going to come in here and all of a sudden they're running a triple option every play. Uh, I don't think. Uh, so, you know, we'll see. But, I mean, this is a, he's a good player, though. And, again, when you watch him, you, you just he – really, he really sparked him, I thought. And, I mean, just I watched every play just live, and I thought he just got better as the game went. And you could tell he, there was a lot of energy that he brought into it. And uh, he's a tough kid. And you, you can tell that because he's, he's not he, – I didn't see any fear in him at all. And, and, and he coming into a situation where, you know, you're, you're down, right? And you got to go lead your team. And it's the first time you played. I mean, this is a, it's a big moment. And I thought he handled it very well. So, um, you know, that's why they recruited him. But he's a, he's a good-looking kid. And, you know, look forward to – the matchup. You talked about the, the experience, the line that they have, and the history of those running backs, but they've not run the ball super effectively the first three games. As you kind of watch film on that, is there anything that stood out to you, or you kind of just say, like, hey, I know, I've seen enough of these guys before that I know what they're capable of? Well, I think a lot of things happen in college football the first week or two. You know, everybody's still figuring things out. You know, you, you see some 
you see some weird things in college football, especially early in the season. That's just part of it. Uh, you know, I think you got to give the opponent some credit too. Uh, you know, but they're they're going in to score. It's ten to three, late second quarter against Tennessee, and they're whatever they on a on a fifteen or whatever. I mean, they're they great drive. They're getting ready to go tie this thing up. Pick six, and all of a sudden, man, it just kind of got away from them quick. Uh, and again, a game like that, it's it's a you know now you're in a hole. So. You know, it's not like you're just going to line up and run the football when you, when you all of a sudden you got a, a pretty big deficit and it's the second half of a football game against a really good opponent. You've got to, you know, it's probably not going to be quite what you scripted on your game plan. So some of that stuff is skewed, you know. I mean, there's a lot of statistics these first couple of games that, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay too much attention to them, you know. I mean, you know, you know sometimes who you play early can really skew things. Uh, but you know, you, the picture will paint itself. But they, 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 these guys can run the football, and um, you know, obviously, and too, they got some new pieces. Uh, you know, the, the new, the, really, the center in there. But the backs, this is their first time playing uh, there. Quarterback McCall's first time playing and getting there. But you know, I, I, th this is a team that'll be able to run the ball you know, when it's all said and done. I mean, that's how they're built, and and I don't have any. That's what they've always been able to do, and. And then they create explosives. I mean, they create a lot of explosives and shots, uh, you know, through the run game. So, yeah, I mean, I think the game kind of got a little crazy in the Western Carolina game. That was kind of a uh, same thing. Weird stuff happens. If you really watch the game, I mean, you can give Western Carolina some credit, too. I think they did a heck of a job. Um, and then there were some mistakes and some turnovers and some things that happen in, a, in, in games sometimes like that. And that I think frustrated them. Um, but, hey, they did what they needed to do and won the game. And then the same again, Tennessee, they're in a, it's a really good battle. And here's a pick six. And all of a sudden, the game's away. Now you're not really going according to game plan. Flip side, look at uh, the La Tech game and, and kind of what happened there. Quarterback's out, uh, you know, uh, just, some, just some still probably filling out some things. But when it's all said and done, this is a team that I think We'll be able to run the football. Hopefully not this week. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a, I promise you this. Uh, we we we've got to be able. To, you better be ready to stop the run against NC State. If you're not, if you can't stop the run against these guys, you you're in for a long day. Because again, everything comes through that. Uh, if they can stay on schedule and create explosives, you know, especially moving the pocket and some of those things, you got you got some issues. How was the tackling against Appalachian State? Our tackling, yeah, uh, it was good. I mean, it was it was I thought better. Uh, we got better uh, from the Georgia game. You know, we gave up. Uh, it was I'm talking about it, and I'm talking about our guys that. You know, we it, it was 56 nothing at half. You know, I don't think anybody saw that coming. Uh, I mean, I'd like to say I saw that coming, but I I didn't see that coming. Uh, you know, but our kid, the, the, these kids, they just played great, man. I mean, and just you know, here we went, and so now all of a sudden you. Okay, Peter Woods gets banged up, you know. I mean, we, 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 that's that's not a good press conference, right? You get some guys hurt, and it's 56 nothing, and and uh, you know why are some of these guys in the game? The the, the frustrate. It's easy on offense, right? Because you can just go out there and guys can play. You can punt, but on defense, when you sub a bunch of guys and you got some guys down there that have been over on the scout team all week, and now they're out there having to execute a game plan because the app isn't subbing. You know, and you know, all of a sudden it can be a little frustrating, and because you know, you all of a sudden your stats get jacked up, and you know, but they need to play too. They need to play, and so you need to coach them. And there's an opportunity, so you just have to kind of take a deep breath and and not get too frustrated about it, um, and let those guys play. Uh, so some of those guys were better than others. You know, there were some guys in there that maybe had a missed tackle or two that. Probably not going to play much, uh, you know, in, in some of these games. But it was an opportunity to get them in the game. Maybe some, even some walk-on guys. So, uh, but I, I thought we did a, a a good job in that first half with our our first group. You've seen the three-three-five stack a bunch. The way they do it. What's the particular, I guess, problems they present? And then are there any differences in the way they attack that you see on film the first couple games? Well, I mean, you know, first of all, them, them three guys up front are. 
they're explosive. Uh, you know, they, they got a little twitch to them. They're, they play violent. The backers, Zero's a heck of a player. Ten's a good player. Um, but just, it's just their ability to be able to uh, manipulate things in coverage. You know, they can be drop eight on first down, and they can be cover zero on first down. Uh, you know, they and and they're, and really, there's th that happens a lot and anywhere on the field. So, you know, they create some challenges. You know, you got to be really disciplined post snap. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, you know, and really diagnosing what they're going to do coverage wise. Uh, so, but they they're not afraid to take some chances. You know, they 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 can bring a lot of pressure. You know, a lot of a lot of twists, a lot of movement up front, um, and, and how they how they fit the gaps, you know, with the with the second and third level players that they have. But and then if they drop eight, you know, they really want to challenge you to try to throw the ball down there, and it's it's hard to throw the ball downfield when you got a bunch of guys. So you have to be able to have some patience and and take what's there. Obviously, you got to be able to run the football against some of that. Um, but that's not all they do, you know. I mean, they they're just multiple. With you hear three three five and you think okay well they're they're not just a big drop eight team I mean they do a lot of that but they're they're cloud they're invert I mean it's straight cover zero uh, you know it's it's robber it's two D it's Tampa I mean they got a little bit of everything that they can get to so I think really being schooled up um, post snap is critical on where to go with the ball in the in the in the in the pass game but. No different for them. For us, it starts being able to run the football. You know, we've got to be able to get our hands on them. And again, that's easier said than done. You know, because they they they're moving around, and you got to identify guys, uh, make sure everybody's on the same page. But um, that's what we practice for. Kind of playing off of that, their, their corners are tall and physical. Uh, kind of interested to see your, especially when they go cover zero, how your freshmen handle that this week. We're gonna find out because uh, they're gonna do it. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, it don't matter who they play. They they they're not afraid to line up and challenge you. Uh, so you know this is a game where you got to make those competitive plays. And uh, you know we didn't make enough on them last year. We made a couple. We had a had a huge uh, missed opportunity on a third down that we should have had. And um, you know you, you watch that game. We we missed some opportunities. We had a big play called back because we had a penalty. Uh, you know, so I mean, there, there was there was some missed opportunities, and uh, but we battled back and gave ourselves a chance, but it just it wasn't enough. You know, pick six, another turnover. You know, they're gonna force you to make competitive plays, and to make those plays, you, you got to be where you're supposed to be. The ball's got to be accurate, and you got to protect. Uh, so, you know, that's 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 what uh, that's what it comes down to. Talk about this being you know, a kind of underrated rivalry nationally. Does the fact that uh, states won two of the last three kind of give some extra juice, maybe on, on the players' end? I, mean, I guess there's probably some guys on the roster that, that are one and two against NC State since they. Yeah, that is that's 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 fact. Uh, if they're a junior, that's what they are. Uh, but you know, if you're a fourth-year guy, then you know you you or fifth-year guy, you got a different record. Uh, if you're me, you got a different record. Uh, so. I've been in a bunch of these. Uh, you know, it don't really matter. None of that stuff matters. Uh, we just need to win the game. We need to win the game. None of that matters. Saturday, when you kick it off, you got to go play this game. That's the only thing that matters. How you do this week? They won't have Peyton Wilson, a guy who had been such a big part of their defense over the years. How have you seen them try to kind of fill that gap? And I'm assuming you don't mind not seeing him out there. Yeah, he's a great player. Didn't the Steelers take him? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Steelers. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, man, that's a great pick by the Steelers. I mean, he, he, you talk about like, just he. I think of him. I think of a. He's a perfect fit for the Steelers. I, I, I really loved him as a player. I just thought he was a great one, um, and and a good good kid too. Uh, so, but I mean, you know. Number 10 stepped in there. Zero was a heck of a player for him last year. I mean, he's a really good football player. Um, you know, two is a guy that's been kind of in that, that nickel nickel spot for them. I know he got banged up last week, but, uh, I mean, they just they keep bringing in good football players. They, coach, they do a great job of coaching them. they got a lot of continuity within their staff, a lot of continuity within their development and teaching, and, and uh, again, good experience. So, I mean, it's, he's a great when he's gone, but, and these guys have done a done a nice job for them. <clears throat>
Coach, when you have that offensive explosion and then you have the bye week, what are some coaching tactics to keep the momentum rolling even though you guys didn't have a game? We, we, we played open. You know, let's, we, we still had a game. You know, we, we always say we play Clemson every week. That's kind of our, that's our mindset. It, it really, and that's really what we try to instill in these guys is this, it's, it's not about who you play. It's about how you play. And, um, you know, because if it is about all those other things, you have inconsistency in your preparation, inconsistency in your performance. All right? And, you know, I think one of the reasons we've been in a, not a perfect program, but a very, very, uncommonly consistent program over the last, you know, uh, 12 four to 15 years is that mindset. So, you know, it's not an off week. It wasn't an off week. It's just another work week. We're playing Clemson this week. Uh, and let's don't lose to Clemson. So how did we do that? Well, let's have great preparation. Let's have great meetings. Let's be intentional and, and let's, let's, have, let's have great passion and energy at practice. It starts with us as coaches. So it's no different. We had four good work days, uh, and instead of traveling to the hotel on Friday, hey, they got to be off for a couple days. But same thing, they're off. But, hey, guys, guys are opportunity to get some treatment, watch some tape, watch some football, learn from other people. Man, there's no greater thing than being able to learn from other people. Uh, I do that as a coach all the time. It's one of my favorite things to do. It, it just, you know, whether it's situational stuff, you know, game management, uh, you know, to, to specific X and O stuff. I mean, that's – so it wasn't we, – we played open. I think we, had a, I think we had a great week. I think we beat them. Uh, so now we're into a new week. So it's not – there was no off week. It was just a part of our schedule. And now we're – and now we're on to, to this opponent. Um, and same thing. Let's don't lose to Clemson. You know? Uh, so I think that's the main thing. And I know that, that may sound coach speak, but that's really what it takes. Because if you create something different, you're, you're, to me, you send the wrong message. You know? And again, it's, it's the only way you're going to create that consistency in your performance is consistency in your preparation. And, you know, that's if you're walking out of that field, if you're going in a meeting, it shouldn't matter if there's a game Saturday or not. That that's that's important, and we have to set the tone for that, and that's what we try to do. I don't know if that answers your question or not, but that's what we try to do. You're watching games on a off Saturday for you. Obviously, you're watching NC State because you got them coming up next. Is there what else? What else comes to play besides what your viewing habits are on a off Saturday? Who, Man, I'm gonna it? tell you, I I. I am a big YouTube TV guy now. All right, I discovered I got I finally figured out how to get that freaking app on my phone. Uh, it's like a act of Congress. Uh, I mean, you got to have like birth certificates and all kind of stuff to get some of these things. I mean, like I don't know all these codes from, you know, who's your provider. I mean, it's some crazy stuff on there. But anyway, I got I got the YouTube TV, and man, it was awesome. I had my phone going, I had my iPad going with four screen. And I had the TV going. I would imagine some of y'all probably did the same thing, because uh, that's what you do for a living, right? Like, y'all got to y'all got to know what the heck's going on. I'm, and I mean, we had a lot of teams playing that we're going to play, and so that's really what I did all day. I just watched ball all day, and it was awesome, uh, and just fun to watch. You know, saw some good stuff, saw some bad stuff, um, and uh, you know, just enjoyed it. Talk about Brian Wesco and DJ Moore being able to learn some new positions. Is that just strictly flipping the outside, or they get some work in the slot too? Uh, we, we just kind of pretty much they they are learning their two spots right now. Uh, but formationally, you know, they can move. But that's a part of their position. You know, does that make sense? Like they don't just line up. I mean, they're they might be the X, for example. But certain formations, the X is is in the slot, or he's in a trip set. I mean, you know, so that's stuff that they are all part of. But as far as a different position, we're just asking them to learn the, the X and the Z right now. So uh, we haven't really asked them to move around. They're not flopping. You know, we're not asking West go to go to Z. We're, that's just kind of where they are right now. But again, formationally, they can, we can scheme them up wherever we want them. 
Um, but over time, you'll you'll eventually they'll they'll be able to, um, I think, play multiple positions. I think I think TJ, I think he could definitely play all three positions at some point. Uh, he's not ready for that right now, but at some point he he, he will be. Uh, he, he's really I think Wesco is is a true X Z guy, uh, but you know not that he can't play in the slot, but I don't see him as a true H. You know he he could be a. a formational slot guy, um, you know, play design, stuff like that. But um, he's, a, he's and, and, and same thing with TJ. I mean, he's a, he's a very natural X and Z, but he's one of them, one of those unique guys that I think would be very fluid in the slot, a true, true H guy. He could, he could play any of them, put him wherever you want at some uh, point. Antonio still plays in slot? He can play anywhere. Yeah. He can play all three spots. You know, t that's that's kind of how I see TJ in time. I mean, just play anywhere that you need him to play. Uh, Antonio can do that. How does uh, Tyler Pimples missing the first half kind of impact the, the defense and the safety positions uh, for Saturday's game? I mean, yeah. I mean, so you got one of your, you know, he's a he's a, a key depth guy, key contributor for us, very knowledgeable player. That all of a sudden, you know, you got to you hope that you hope that you can hold up in the first half. Um, you know, and, and, and guys can stay healthy and stuff, and you don't need him. Um, you know, that's because I mean, again, he's a he's a guy that can can go play. Um, but and then obviously it impacts us on special teams. But it is what it is. You have to be ready for it. What have you seen from the running back rotation behind Joe Moffitt, particularly on what the film said about App State? Uh, well, I mean, you know. Not much of a rotation at this point, just because we played two games, and and you know the Georgia game was. I mean, it wasn't. I watched the Eagles play last night. I didn't see much of a rotation. Uh, I saw them hand that ball to Saquon Barkley and throw it over there. So, you know, we got in the Georgia game and we only had 52 snaps. So there wasn't much of a rotation um, to where we felt like we needed to get Phil out a lot. But obviously, you know, as you go through your season, you're hoping that we can create rhythm. And you know drives and and all that stuff uh, to where it naturally happens, and you're you know snapping the ball 70 to 80 times a game, and um, <clears throat> I think that will evolve more as we go. Uh, so um, pleased with those guys. I mean, I thought Jay Haynes got in there and he averaged I think I want to say it was like nine, almost 10 yards a carry, uh, and you know Easy E did a great job. Uh, they all got some opportunity, and so you know, and they took advantage of it. So it was, it's, it's good to see. We feel we we really like our guys uh, that we have in that room. So, but it all again, it all starts with Phil, and you know, we'll make sure he gets what he needs, and then and then we'll we'll see how they roll from there. Speaking of Phil, I think one of the players said that he, he went over 20 miles per hour on that 83 yard carry. Were you surprised to see him break that 20 miles per hour barrier? I was not. No, it's not, man. He can run. He can run. People don't really know how fast he is. He's a 230-pound guy. I mean, he can move. And he got the, – the great thing about that is he got stronger. You know, he, he's, a, he's got some, he's got some uh, uh, long speed, you know, uh, an ability to really uh, finish a long run. That's, that's not, not easy to do. Uh, but he gets stronger as he goes. Same thing in a game. He gets better as he goes. But, but – when he gets out in that open field, man, you, you better get him quick because he's he's gonna he's not gonna steady out. I mean, he's gonna he's gonna accelerate and keep it going all the way through. I mean, he's just very powerful. But he really practices that way. If you watch him at practice, I mean, anytime he runs at practice, that's what he does. He finishes long runs. He runs. If we're backed up, if you know we got the ball in the twenty or whatever, you know, that's where we're working on a team period or something, and he'll he'll run he'll he'll sprint all the way to the goal line. So he practices those long runs, um, but no, I was not surprised at all. Um, other people might have been, you know, because again, you just look at him and you think he doesn't have that type of speed, but he can really run. Is that a great teaching play? And you can rewind it several times because I think Brenning still got a nice seal block, and maybe Sadler told him got one to show if you do this. I, I mean, that clay was a clinic. I mean, you got five offensive linemen, you got five blocks. You got two tight ends in the game. You got two blocks. The only person not blocked is the safety. Well, that's the running back. We can't block them all. So that's his guy. Well, he beat his guy. And then the receivers did a great job of getting those guys wide and outside. 
and then uh, you know uh, I think Wesco stayed inside and then they gave great effort getting down the field to try to give him a little escort if you will but everybody was blocked but that's what you draw up like that's when you do a play you know, when you're like okay well we're gonna block this guy we're gonna block that guy and you got you know and you, it's a beautiful thing when you see it when you see it come to fruition like that it was it was awesome and we can't block the safety so Phil you got him and I mean it was it was uh, that's the way every place you work every place designed to score you know, theoretically uh, but that one that one worked a lot of them worked. Uh, a lot of them worked in that game, so we need a little more of that. Richmond Weaver, Tiger Tailgate Show, NIL and transfer portal is obviously a <coughs> focal point in college athletics today, but you seem to continue to emphasize Paul Journey. Why is that so unique and why you continue to emphasize Paul Journey? I mean, that's it's a, just a foundational piece to this program to the purpose of this program. You know, the number one thing is graduation. Um, we know what we've done there. Um, I mean, you can come look at everybody's picture on the wall. I mean, we got, we've got a lot of guys that have um, gotten their education and have taken advantage of the opportunity, and, and that's well documented. Um, the second thing is really equipping them as men. That's what Paul Journey's all about. Uh, it's, it's teaching them that, you know, not life after football, Life's happening right now. Life's happening right now, and trying to help prepare them, you know, and you know more than just a guy that can run a route or rush a passer. Um, that's very important. And so, you know, career opportunities, networking, uh, you know, exposing them to so many different things, whether it be through community service or micro internships, uh, and really creating a vision for them beyond the football field. I think that's really important. I mean I, I mean, I think ultimately that's our main, main responsibility is who are they going to be as men and husbands, fathers, what kind of leader can they be? So Paul Journey is a leadership initiative. We're really truly trying to build, you know, use this platform of, of football and education to build great leaders and great men. That's, and that's what Paul Journey is all about. That's, and that, we got six people that wake up every day and that's all they do is think about how we can help these guys uh, do life better. Because life is hard, and life life is hard. We all know that, right? And it never gets easier. You just learn how to handle the hard better as you live life. It never really ever get easier. You know, we just you just learn how to manage things better as you go through. And so, but these are really young people, and you're trying to. So Paul Journey is about equipping them. You know, it's life skills. It's it's basic stuff. I mean, how to tie a tie uh, to you know just again specific career stuff, financial stuff. Uh, now we have, that's what NIL has been great for us because now you have true hands-on opportunity to even further prepare them for the real world as opposed to theory. You know, this is, you know, hey, what, what you know, we've always done financial literacy here. We've always done tax education. We've always done that, but now you got real world application. So it's even more important. And um, so it's just, it's a great thing. It really is, and um, you know I think that's another reason why, you know, kids stay here. They see the value that comes with being a part of this program, and um, you know our Paul Journey Ambassadors. That's a great program. That's they're elected uh, you, to become a Paul Journey Ambassador. That's not an easy process, and you got to be voted on by your team. But it's a big deal. It means a lot to these guys. Uh, so again, it's a true leadership, and that's what we need. We need good leaders. And it's a true leadership initiative uh, that that is, I think, one of a kind in all of college football. Uh, I really do. It's a curriculum. You know, it's what you do as a freshman. It's what you do as a sophomore. It's what you do as a junior. It's what you do as a senior. This is what we do collectively as a team. And it's a true curriculum that, you know, hey, we execute the plan, you know, year in and year out. And, 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 it's, and, it, and you see transformation in these guys' lives as they go through it. If they stay, you, you'll see the transformation uh, in them. You know, again, through all the things that we do. But Paul Journey really helps us, you know, fulfill a big part of our purpose. And, you know, the, the third part is having a good experience, having some fun, and the last part's winning a championship. And, you know, we've fulfilled that purpose, you know, for 16 years now. 
And again, everybody that's come here since I've been here has won a championship. Every everybody except last year's freshman. That's it. Obviously, this guy's that right here just got here, but every everybody has won a championship since that came here since February of '09. And you know, so we've we've not the world changed, but the purpose hasn't changed. How you go about fulfilling that has those that's always evolving. Um, but we still live it out every day. And Paul Journey is, and it's, it's it's really special. I mean, doing an awesome job. And Jeff is Jeff is uh, Jeff is great, man. I mean, he just does such a such a great job, you know, with those players. And so does Jewel. Josh Watson's back now, working doing our our career development side, and Anton and Kayla, uh, you know, Chris Miller. We got we got a great group over there that that, that work with our our, our players. Got time for one more for Coach, if anybody has one. Yeah, update on Tyler Brown and how he plays again. Yeah, he's uh, out there yesterday, same thing, day to day, getting better every day. And uh, we'll see how it goes Saturday. All right. Okay, Thanks, appreciate Coach. it. Thanks. Wes Goodwin will be joining us momentarily. <laughs> All right, so that is a wrap from Clemson for head coach Dabo Sweeney. Uh, recapped, really, all of the success that they had over the App State game um, and then some of that work that has happened since. You heard our own Carmine Jame ask uh, Coach Sweeney how they kept some of that momentum. Everybody talked about how unfortunate it is to have such a huge game with so much momentum and then have to go on the bye week. He said that's just part of what the Clemson program is all about. He said every week they're playing Clemson. Uh, they just just played a, a opponent by this week and played the open week. And so that same preparation, uh, that consistency that they've been able to do is what they just continued to build on. Had a bunch of injury updates from some guys. You just heard him rap there talking about Tyler Brown. I uh, was asked about Peter Woods and some of his rehab from coming back from that App State game. Uh, Coach Sweeney talking so much about uh, all of the hard work that the guys put in in this bye week. They had that extra time, though, to recover a little bit, to spend some time in their 100 yards of wellness. That's a facility uh, that Dabo Sweeney and the Clemson football program has been able to build that focuses on the recovery process for those guys. We'll actually take you behind the scenes uh, this coming week in Clemson All Access with head coach Dabo Sweeney, give you a behind-the-scenes, in-depth look at that facility and what goes into helping these guys stay healthy and then also come back from some some of these injuries. As for NC State, Coach Sweeney talking about this one as a rivalry game, uh, and you will be reminded that uh, NC State has won the last two games against Clemson, uh, including one uh, last year at NC State. Uh, the Tiger is looking to keep some momentum going. They'll be taking on a freshman quarterback in C.J. Bailey. Dabo saying that he's not expecting them to do anything different, always preparing for a tough run game uh, from the Wolf Pack, and of course, a really tough defense that tries to do a lot of stuff. Dabo saying they're going to need to get their hands on that defense in order to just enforce their will and do what this Clemson offense was able to show they are capable of doing last week against App State, looking to build on some of that momentum. A big piece to that will be this offensive line that showed uh, just their continued growth and development with so many guys and so much experience on that O-line. Uh, they'll look to continue and build on that again this week. Talking about Phil Maffa saying that he's the guy. They're going to continue to ride him uh, and continue to see what he can do as the running back that number one running back as he continues to wear those carries. He showed his speed. He showed uh, what a dynamic player he can be carrying uh, the bulk of those reps and they'll continue to look for a big game from him this week. It's going to be a noon game at Saturday from Memorial Stadium. We will break down plenty more uh, from today's press conference tonight at six o'clock for talking Tuesday. Stick with us coming up after the break. Haley Spittler is standing by with your midday news.